Today in this video, we're going to talk about the new, the new real estate commission law, what it is and what it ain't. Check it out. Hi, I'm Rhonda Burgess and I'm a real estate broker and mortgage underwriter here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And my firm is Southern Living Realty Partners. Hey, hey, hey. I know I've been out of the loop. I ain't done a video in like two weeks. Um, I had to prob I had to get problem child, that last child, uh, another car and oh, Lord have mercy. That's been a that's been a journey. But two things I want to do first. I want to shout out Miss Latoya in Texas. When I tell you she done done her homework, um, very loyal listener, she had done stuff. Um, she had done her homework before we even talked. And then afterwards, when I gave her a list of some things she should do to get ready, because she's going to be doing a, a construction of perm with FHA. When I tell you she was on it, she was on it. So I want to shout out Miss Latoya in Texas. Here locally in Nashville, I want to shout out uh, Miss Latasha and Mr. James. When I tell you they did their homework so tough. And in fact, um, I had been working with their daughter. Um, she was one of the first people who reached out to me when I first started doing the videos here in Nashville. And she had reached out to me and um, we've kept in touch over the last four years. And she was like, hey, my mom and, and my and my uh, stepdad got their stuff together. They they were ready to do something. And I was like, OK, they did their homework so well. Their file came out of underwriting um, Friday. With no real conditions on it, meaning it's pretty much good to go. They just needed for some explanation letters about some previous addresses and a clear copy of somebody's ID. That's what you call doing your homework and getting it together. Do you see how simple this is going to be? In fact, they're buying new construction and we're going to be able to probably close early because they have done their homework. So again, y'all do your homework. It'll save you a lot of time and a lot of stress. Now, back to this, let me talk about this um, new real estate commission law. First of all, it is not a law. This is a proposed settlement that the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, has proposed to... Um, uh, for a settlement on a lawsuit that came out of three states in the Midwest about buyer's agent commission. So again, let me say this. This is not a law <laughs> and it won't be a law. Um, this is a proposed settlement to this class action lawsuit. Now, um, again, it's a proposed settlement. Just know that when you're dealing with a large class action lawsuit like this, it'll probably take some still some months there not anticipating they're anticipating that the court will uh agree to the settlement but that that's up in the air you know because everybody you know if some people don't agree or whatever it may not even you know go through the end but they're um anticipating that if uh, the court does agree to this settlement that these changes will go into effect like mid-july of 2024 so we'll just see let me clear up some common misconceptions in this because I'm seeing the, 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 the media, mainstream media reporting this and they is reporting it wrong. OK, so. Let me read to you from the fact sheet of the settlement itself. NAR, the National Association of Realtors, has agreed to put in place a new rule prohibiting offers of compensation on the MLS. The MLS is your multiple listing service. And they're, again, um, anticipating this change to go into effect mid-July 2024. What that means is, as a realtor, when I'm looking at listings in the MLS, uh, let, let me back up one, se one second. The, the multiple listing service, the MLS, is built on the, note, the idea, the foundation of cooperation, meaning cooperation between the listing broker and the buyer's broker. Because everything that had to be listed in the MLS, this is a rule from years ago when we first got MLS, that you have to agree to uh, cooperate, meaning the buyer's agent has to be uh, compensated. Okay, you have to offer some type of compensation. Let me say this also, just know that commissions have always been negotiable. I don't know what was going on in these states where these sellers felt like they had to pay this this a certain amount of commission. Commission has always been negotiable. Always. Always. I have never charged, I know just me personally, 
and uh, you know, my business partners and everything, we've never charged a flat uh, commission amount or required that. I mean, every deal is different. Every seller is different. Every buyer is different. So let me say that one more time for the people in the back. Commissions have always been negotiable, okay? But now, so what's going forward is we used to, so if you put your listing in the MLS, you had to agree to cooperate. And you had to, and by cooperating, you had to uh, agree to give a certain amount. It could be a dollar. It could be $5. It could be half of the listing agent's commission. It could be whatever, whatever that number was. But you had to agree to cooperate um, if you were in the MLS, okay? So what this is saying is now, see, when we would log in, um, at first, as a realtor, when I would log in, I could see the commission that was being paid for every listing, for every listing. Earlier, uh, in 23 sometime, my MLS here, um, real tracks in the middle Tennessee area started showing that commission, uh, to everybody, not just real estate agents, you know, uh, not just realtors, buyers, everybody could see it. So that's never been a secret. Again, I don't know what was going on in them states, but that I'm just, it was just different over here. Okay. So now it's just saying that you can't put whatever the compensation is for the buyer's agent, you cannot put that in the MLS. That does not mean that the buyer's agent still will not be compensated. Your seller, the seller can still, uh, you know, do whatever they want to with the commission. Is there, that, that's what they do. I mean, it's, that hasn't changed, but we just can't put it in the um, MLS anymore. Um, the types of compensation available for buyers, brokers will continue to take multiple forms, depending on the broker slash consumer negotiations. Again, it's whatever the seller wants. So there could be a fixed fee commission paid directly by the buyer. It could be concessions from the seller or it could be a portion of the listing broker's compensation. That's, it's always been that way. I, I don't want y'all to think this is something new because it's not, okay? And it says compensation will continue to be negotiable and should always be negotiated between agents and the consumers they serve. Um, the other thing it's talking about is now they, listen, we have always, um, NAR has always suggested that we get a buyer broker brokerage ag agreement, meaning if I'm representing a buyer, right, I should have them sign the agreement that says, okay, how am I going to get paid as the buyer's agent? So, you know, for the most part, people, um, I think a lot of agents, the vast majority have depended on the listing agent cooperating and sharing that commission. Hence the, the MLS. Okay. So now what they're saying is that the buyer's agent again will, can either get paid from that listing agent splitting their money or you go, or you may have to get the buyer's agent may get compensated directly from the buyer. Okay. So for my first time buyers, I want to let you know how this uh, can affect you. If the house you're looking at, let's say you're looking at one, two, three main street. Okay. And if the seller of that house has instructed their agent, the listing agent, that they don't want to pay any commission to a buyer's agent, that the listing agent can keep the entire commission, however much it is, okay, 3%, 8%, 12%, whatever, or maybe it's a flat fee, 5000 10000 1000 whatever. So now what they're saying is that the listing agent does not have to um, share their share that commission, okay, and that the seller can say they're not going to pay anything to a buyer's agent. Cool. That means that the buyer, you, the buyer, will have to pay your agent for representation if that's the situation. Um, whether that's good, bad, or otherwise, I've always used the buyer's agent agreement. Um, and it just simply says, if I don't make X number or percentage, let's say I'm going to use like 18%. <laughs> so if I don't get 18% from 
the listing agent cooperation through the MLS, then the buyer has to make up, has to pay the, me that 18% of the transaction. You know, I'm just throwing out numbers for you, okay? So what this means really is that some of you buyers, you may be having to pay for your representation and it's not coming directly from this from the listing agent splitting that commission. So that's just something for you to keep in mind, especially my first time buyers, especially those of you on a VA loan. You're buying your veteran, you're buying with a VA loan. This will this may really impact you because you using a VA loan, you are not allowed to pay the real estate agent. You're not allowed to pay anybody in that transaction as the buyer. So just keep that in mind. Um, one other thing that this says is that litigation concerning cooperative compensation may continue. So again, this is a proposed settlement. The, the, the sides that are fighting in this, they may not agree to this. This, this may not work. This is all that's proposed at, at the present time. You know, um, it also says that the settlement is subject to court approval which is a process that they expect to take several months. And, you know, people have the, uh, the right to object or propose different things. So again, nothing's going to happen in the immediate time period right now. This may go into effect if the court agrees to it. All sides agree come uh, mid-July of 2024. One thing that I see that I don't think um, a lot of people thought about is you know, here, um, a lot of places, your MLS is wholly owned by the, uh, by the NAR, by the National Association of Realtors. So if we, if I will just say this, if, if a lot of realtors, if a lot of agents are not required to be a member of the MLS because there's no more cooperation, I see a lot of agents leaving their MLSs. I anticipate, this is just me, this is just me talking, I'm just watching, you know, I've been in the game 26, 27 years, I, I'm not, I'm not one of these people that's all upset about it, think it's the end of the world, I remember when we got MLS, see, when I got in, we were still getting those big old books, you know, in big old books, we get them listing books every week, this is just, I mean, it's just a, just a change, um, but just know for my buyers that you may be asked to pay for your representation. It may not be paid for by the listing broker splitting that compensation anymore. That's just all it is to it. And this is nationwide. And again, my VA borrowers, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen on for y'all because I guess you may have to bring more money to the table. That's what it's meaning for buyers. Cause if that seller does not want to pay the buyer's agent and the listing agent is not, um, you know, cooperating with the sharing of that, of that commission, whatever they've negotiated, then you may have some buyers that are going to be asked to bring money to the table. I think it'll hurt, um, you know, first time buyers who, who may be, cash strapped, which a lot of people are, because then if you got to pay, um, you know, to be represented, that that's that's more cost that you're going to have to uh, come up with in order to have, you know, in order to buy some particular houses. I also think that, um, you know, I, I just hope buyers don't get the bad end of the stick because that means you're going to have a lot of buyer. You may have some buyers in certain states where you're you're going to be unrepresented, meaning if you don't have the the funds available to pay for representation, if you have to pay for a buyer's agent, if you have to pay for your agent, then you're just dealing with the seller's agent. The seller's agent, their fiduciary responsibility is to the seller. Now. Some states do allow dual agency, but some states don't. Dual agency means that that one agent can represent both sides. Okay, that may not, I, I've just never found that to be a good deal for the buyers because 
their first duty was to the seller because they signed a listing agreement with the seller to sell that house. So I don't know what they're going to do about the states that do not allow dual agency because they have that written into their real estate laws in certain states that you cannot do dual agency. So if that person is coming unrepresented because they can't afford it, uh, they can't afford to hire an agent. Ugh, I think that's going to be kind of sticky. I think it's going to be a little bit of a mess. And then the, the next thing I see happening is um, I will see, I just, this is just me. It's me and my tea leaves over here. I think um, a lot of agents are going to opt out of uh, MLS participation. And I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing um, other type um what am I trying to say? Like a listing consortium where agents get together, different brokerages get together and list their their listings over here totally separate, not in the MLS. You know what I'm saying? And so it's going to be interesting because, again, if agents start pulling out the MLS, look, Zillow gets their listings directly from our MLSs. So if the MLS is go the way of the world, you know, fall to the wayside, or you have a lot of people defecting out of the MLSs um, and doing their own thing or keeping, we're going back to a bunch of pocket listings, is my opinion. See, the whole, one of the reasons why they came out with the MLS, because they want to get rid of pocket listings. Pocket listings mean I listed, I listed Miss Susie's house today at 456 Main Street, but I don't put it in the computer nowhere. I don't put it in the MLS. I'm out here marketing it because I'm trying to get the 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 eight the buyer myself or whatever, right? So then you're gonna have a whole lot of shysty back back rooms type stuff going on if agents can go back to having pocket listings, if agents can go back to not having to um necessarily disclose all this information because you you if you don't have another agent on the other side. Are we sure that they're that you're that you as the buyer are still going to get all the relevant information that you should have since you only have one agent in the transaction? And let's just be honest, this is going to slow stuff down because I'm going to tell you like this. It's already like pulling teeth to get a hold to some agents right now. So if if I have a, a buyer and they have five, six properties they want to see and I'm and I'm and now I'm going into the MLS. Now I can't see anything about compensation or whatever. So I got to call all six of these agents or whatever. Some of them ain't going to answer the phone. Some of them are horrible. So, Ooh, I talk real bad about, about agents cause I am one and I've dealt with it for years. So, um, I think it's going to slow down a lot of stuff cause getting a hold of some of these people and some people just don't have the, 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 the best track record of returning phone calls, getting paperwork to you, letting you know what's going on in the transaction. So I think that's going to slow down some transactions, but just know this is not a law. Buyers agents will still be compensated. And, and if they're not compensated from the listing agent selling, I mean, you know, sharing their commission or the seller actually giving the buyer concessions as the commission or the buyer's agent or the buyer's gonna have to pay their agent directly. It just adds, an, but it, it's always been that way. This is nothing new because most of us have always used a buyer's, uh, a buyer's agency agreement. That's the only difference is now everybody's gonna have to use it. And you're gonna have to know whether if you're not getting paid if the agent is not getting paid from the seller or the listing agent, then they've got to be paid by the buyer. Or I just don't see a whole lot of buyer's agents participating because who wants to work for free? If you're not going to get paid, why would somebody work for free? It just, it, it, it just don't work like that. But that's just my opinion. Again, my name is Rhonda Burgess and I'm a real estate broker here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. If you need help with buying or selling a home in the Middle Tennessee area, we'd be glad to help you. My contact information is below. Thank you, and as always, have a blessed day.